Hey, it's Darius, and I'm in the CPA exam Facebook groups, and it seems like every day someone's asking about cash basis to accrual. And I think the biggest mistake candidates make with this topic is they try to memorize. Helpful hint for you, don't try to memorize cash basis to accrual. Instead of memorization, try association. What do I mean by association? Watch this video to the end and walk into the FAR exam with confidence and pass FAR because the right teacher makes all the difference. All right, in this video, we're gonna do one of the more difficult cash basis to accrual basis questions. Cash to accrual net income. And if you're familiar with I-75 videos, you know that there's three types of cash to accrual questions. There's a cash to accrual revenue, well, that's more of a basic question. Cash to accrual expenses, a little bit tougher. And cash to accrual net income. Why is the cash to accrual net income question harder than either a cash to accrual revenue or cash to accrual expense question? Well, the answer is in a cash to accrual revenue question, you're only interested in the change in receivables and the change in the unearned revenue liability account. In the cash to accrual expenses question, you're only interested in the change in payables and the change in the prepaid expenses. But in a cash to accrual net income question, they could give you a combination of any or all of the above. So before you watch the rest of this video, you might want to go back and watch the cash to accrual revenue video and the cash to accrual expenses. I want you to imagine you're taking the CPA exam and all of a sudden this question appears. If cash basis net income is 60000 how much is accrual basis net income, given the following information up here? How are you going to get this question right in the time allowed? Answer, you have to have a good basic understanding of cash to accrual revenue and cash to accrual expenses. Could you memorize your way through this question? No way. So let me show you the I-75 way. There are five different accounts that have changed from beginning of the year to the end of the year. We've got to pick one at a time and determine the impact on net income of each one. I'm going to start with accounts receivable. So we collected 60000 this year, and I'm only interested in the change in accounts receivable from beginning of the year to the end of the year. I'm going to pretend that the other four aren't here. So we collected 60000 and we'll start with that. Ending receivables are given at $600, and that represents what was earned this year, but collected next year. So because of that, the $600 has not been collected yet. That means it's not already in the 60,000. So we'll add the $600 because it was earned this year. That $600 should count as revenue this year, and revenue and net income have a direct relationship. So we're gonna add 600 because what's good for revenue is good for net income right revenue and net income have a direct relationship now the 1400 beginning receivable balance that was collected this year but it wasn't earned this year because the 1400 beginning receivable balance was earned last year so subtract 1400 because if we don't subtract it we'll be double counting it as earned in both years that 1400 was earned last year. If we don't subtract 1400, we're going to be counting it as revenue in both years. So when we subtract 1400 and add 600, that means cash basis net income might have been 60,000, but accrual basis net income would be 59,200. And that would be the answer if none of these other items were here. If the only change here was the change in accounts receivable, then accrual basis net income would be 59,200. Remember that revenue and net income have a direct relationship. So whatever we do to revenue has the same impact on net income. So when we added 600 to revenue, we added 600 to net income. When we took 1400 off revenue this year, we subtract 1400 from net income. So we're not done with the question yet. We can't choose A, B, C, or D, but what we can do is go on and choose another one of these accounts now that we're done with receivables and we'll bring forward our new balance of 59,200. We don't have to start with 60,000 again because we've already handled the receivable. So let's bring forward 59,200 
and go on and pick another item. So we'll cross out accounts receivable since we handled that already. And now we're going to look at unearned revenue. How are we going to go from this 59,200 figure to accrual basis net income just looking at unearned revenue and nothing else? So we can't memorize. We have to associate. And what do we associate unearned revenue with? Well, that's cash collected in advance. And the beginning balance of unearned revenue is what we collected last year, earned this year. So since we earned it this year, add $300. And that brings us to 59.5. What do we associate ending unearned revenue? $500. Well, ending unearned revenue was collected this year, but it won't be earned until next year. So subtract the 500 because it hasn't been earned yet. And that brings us to 59,000 if there were no other items. So we're not done with the question, but we can at least say that accrual basis net income would now be 59,000 if there were no other items. And on the next slide, we'll bring that 59,000 balance forward and we'll choose another item. So we cross out unearned revenue, accounts receivable we already handled. Let's just look at the impact of accounts payable and we'll bring forward the $59,000 figure, which is our net income figure right now after taking into account the unearned revenue and the accounts receivable. And again, we can't memorize. We have to associate. What do we associate ending accounts payable with? Well, ending payables represent expenses incurred this year, paid next year. So since the $1,000 was incurred this year, then under accrual accounting rules, that's an additional expense, which means net income goes down, right? Because expenses and net income have an inverse relationship. Very important. Ending payables represent this year's accrued expenses. And as expenses go up, net income goes down. That's why we subtracted the ending payable balance of $1,000. What about the beginning payable? What do we associate that with? Well, beginning payable represents expenses incurred last year, paid this year. So since it wasn't this year's expense, add back that $3,000 because it was paid this year, so it was subtracted when paid under cash basis rules. But now we're trying to convert to accrual basis, so add back the 3000 since it's not this year's expense. And that brings us to 61000 So if there were no other items, accrual basis net income would be $61,000. let us go on now and do wages payable, and it should work the same way as accounts payable because they're both payables. And we'll bring forward the $61,000 figure, which is currently our net income. So cross out what we've already done, accounts payable, unearned revenue, and accounts receivable. We're sitting at $61,000, but we're yet to handle wages payable and prepaid rent. So let's look at wages payable. What do we associate ending payables with? Expenses incurred this year, paid next year. So expenses go up, which means net income goes down. Subtract $400. Subtract the ending payable, since expenses have an inverse relationship with net income. What's good for expenses, bad for net income. Okay, what about beginning wages payable? The $300, what do we associate that with? Well, beginning payables represent expenses incurred last year. They were paid this year, but they're not this year's expense. So add back the 300 since it was not incurred this year. And if there were no other items, accrual basis net income would now be at 60900 because you take the 61000 you'd subtract 400 and add back 300 And notice how the wages payable and the accounts payable worked exactly the same way, and we expected that they would. Now let's carry the 60900 balance forward to the next slide, and we'll handle our last item, prepaid rent. Okay, so net income is now 60900 after handling four of these items prepaid rent or prepaid expenses. What do we associate that with? We haven't seen one of these yet in this problem. Prepaid expenses are current assets. Beginning prepaid rent was actually paid last year, the expense incurred this year. So because that prepaid rent of 1200 expired during the year, you would increase the expense and subtract the 1200 from net income since expenses have an inverse relationship with net income. What about the ending prepaid rent, the 1500 Well, ending prepaid rent was paid this year. It's incurred next year. It's next year's expense. We paid it this year, so add back 1500 because 
it was subtracted under cash basis rules when paid. But it's not this year's expense, so add it back. And when you do that, you end with 61200 for accrual basis net income. And that happens to be answer choice A. There is no shortcut to solving this type of question. As cash to accrual multiple choice questions go, this is probably the toughest one you'll ever see. So if you understand this one, there's no way they can get you. Why is it tougher than a typical one? Because this is not cash to accrual revenue, where we're only looking at the change in receivables and change in unearned revenue. It's not even a cash to accrual expenses question, where we're limited to the change in payables and change in prepaid expenses. This was a cash to accrual net income question, where they could throw in a combination of all of these. And if you want to memorize anything, the only thing to memorize is that revenue has a direct relationship with net income, and expenses have an inverse relationship with net income. So if you found that video easy to follow, what should you do right now? Go to cpaexamtutoring.com and get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference.